Hey, welcome back to Hemtight Homestead. And today we are doing a collaboration. It's Odd Holiday Meals. In the description, you'll find the dates scheduled for the video releases for the collaboration of Odd Holiday Meals. And make sure you're watching each video and commenting on each one. A comment on each video will get you entered for a prize drawing. Thank you very much to Tony at Kettle Kitchen and Ryan at Heavenly Hills Homestead for inviting us to this collaboration. I've been out here all day long working up a heck of an appetite. If you follow along Hematite Homestead Cooney Coonies, you know that we pasture raised heritage breed Cooney Coonies right here on the farm. Last weekend, we did our first ever full size Cooney Cooney harvest. We've done multiple roaster size harvests over the last couple of years, and this was our very first full size pig. And I made a special dish out of this. It's old world British style pork pies. Let's check that out. So step one is to make a collagen pork jelly. And to do this, we use this beautiful pig's foot. You see here the pig's foot full of lots of bone, lots of connective tissue, and lots of cartilage and collagen all around all these areas between each one of these bones, and especially up here around the toes. Makes it perfect for a pork jelly. So I'll start off with a whole onion. This much celery and carrots. So if you make stocks, you already know that this is the holy trinity of stock. Onion, celery, carrot. I add about four cloves of crushed garlic. Some rosemary. And some thyme, about a tablespoon of salt, and then some fresh cracked pepper. Now to that, I add about six cups of water and get this thing covered and this will go on low for about 24 hours so the next morning before i get ready to head out to work i'm going to take a little peek at it see how it's doing we're about 12 hours in halfway there All right, we're right at 24 hours and I'm straining out everything from this uh, pork stock, which is going to become pork jelly. You see like little tidbits of bone here. So I'm gonna do a little inspection of everything that came out of this and all the bone has been completely um, separated all the fat collagen and connective tissue all surrounding it completely broke down nothing left in the skin except for meat so I was really pleased with how this went it smells amazing and it looked amazing so now I'll just turn off the crock pot and let it cool back down to room temperature. Once that happens, then I'll stick it in the fridge and that's where it's gonna live overnight. So, so far we've done a couple of things. Uh, it's been very labor intensive. It's been taking me multiple days. On day one, I started the pork jelly in the crock pot and that's in the refrigerator we'll show that to you in a minute look at the pork jelly that we made and there it's nice and gelled up it's got a beautiful color it's hard to tell from this shot down inside this dark bowl but this is uh almost you can almost see through it but uh it's it's a dark browny collar but you can see through it and i was really happy with how this turned out and can't wait to use it so when it comes time to put this in the pie i'll just take out a little bit enough for the pies Put it in a little saucepan and get it heated back up to liquid state and we'll put that in the pie and we'll get to that tomorrow. And just now we've uh, cubed up and diced up some 
pork, and this is fresh Cooney Cooney pork, come from Cooney Cooney pig that we harvested last weekend. This is a combination of some shoulder meat with a high fat content, a little bit of lean meat from hind leg scrap, and a little bit of our belly trim. And I diced it up uh, best I could with my knife skills. And you are certainly welcome to grind this, but traditionally pork pie is minced or uh, cubed and diced. So I wanted to keep it as traditional as possible. So now we're going to add some seasoning to this and it's going to be another day. This is going to hang out in the refrigerator for a whole day before we do anything else with it. So let's take a look at the seasonings that I'm going to use. And you can use anything that you want to. I mean, just the flavor profile of this, make it what you want. This is what I like to do. So a little bit of black pepper. And there's no measurements, no rhyme or reason. I'm just going off of experience and uh, looking at it, smelling it, and knowing when I got the right amount. All right, I like to add a uh, fennel seed to this. And so that's going to work out to be a little bit less than a tablespoon. And I'm actually going to take this fennel seed and use my knife and crack it up a little bit. If you're going to crack this up, it opens up the flavor profiles of it way better. And uh, I can really start to smell it really well now. I am using rub sage. I prefer to use fresh sage, but I could not find any. So rub sage is going to have to do. And I don't want this to overpower it. So I want to make sure that I got a little bit less in with the fennel because this will definitely overpower the uh, dish. So a little bit less than what we used on the fennel. And that goes in there. And then anise seed. And again, this is going to be just a pinch of anise seed. Man, this stuff is very fragrant, very powerful. That's about it. And that's going to go in there. I love the smell of this stuff. If you don't use any seed in uh, sausages, and stuffings, and stuff like that, man, you don't know what you're missing. All right, so I'm just going to give this a good mix. And I'm going to kind of gauge the color and the fragrance to see if I need to add any more. When I mix this up, I want to see everything nice and incorporated in it, which I'm not really seeing right now, so I might go at it one more time with my seasonings and give it a good smell and see what it smells like. Because what it smells like is what it's going to taste like. So after a good mixing and a good smelling, I decided to go one more time with my seasonings and I added everything again to it exactly the same as the first time except it did not do a nice seed the second time around. So there's what that looks like. And it's very fragrant now of uh, sage and fennel and I think I got it just right. Now this is going to get covered up and we're going to Take this into day three of this recipe. This is going to hang out in the refrigerator uh, all night tonight and into tomorrow when we get ready to make this dish. And these flavors will really start to meld really well in here. It is lacking one more ingredient, and that's salt. I will add this 2% uh, salt to this um, by the weight. It was right at two pounds, so I'll do the math on it and figure out how much salt I need to add. And I'm not going to do that until I get ready to put the pies together because if this sits in the refrigerator with salt in it all night, it'll draw moisture out and start to dry it up. And I do not want to do that. All right, let's stick her in the fridge. All right, I'm going to zip right through this pastry making. And so in the bowl, I already have one cup of flour and a teaspoon of salt. And to that, I add half a cup of fresh rendered Cooney Cooney leaf lard. Leaf lard comes from the leaf fat on the inside of the belly of the pig and is a prized possession, highly sought after by five-star pastry chefs around the world. 
So I give this a good mix. I just uh, keep going at it until it's all nice and incorporated and crumbly. The lard is all mixed in with the flour. And Kelly's going to help me out here in a second with three tablespoons of water. And here comes water. And this is very cold water. And the gloves was a really bad idea here. Um, I think I would have been way better off to just wash my hands and use my hands instead of the gloves. But it was what it was. So I get this uh, rolled up into a nice little ball. It gets wrapped up in saran wrap. And yet one more thing that hangs out in the refrigerator for a whole 24 hours. All right, I've got my lard pie dough all ready to go. It uh, sat in the refrigerator about 24 hours. And I rolled it out. This is going to be the lid here. And uh, so back in the settler's days, the traditional way to do this was to uh, roll it out, which you see here in a second I got here on my cutting board and hand raise it. They had a little wooden tool that had a little handle on it and round on the bottom, they just set it on there and they built up the, uh, they built up the pie dough up the wooden cylinder. I don't have one of those. I've been looking for one of those at estate auctions and uh, um, antique stores and stuff like that. Have not found one yet. I will find them one someday. I'm gonna cheat a little bit I'm going to use a mason jar, so old mayonnaise jar. I'm just going to lay it right on top and work it down. All right, the mason jar was a huge failure. My dough wasn't quite stiff enough. I think uh, perhaps my ratio of flour to lard may have been a little bit off. So I got a spring form pan and I just built it inside of there. So finally, after three days of one step after another and lots of prep, we're putting this pie together. I'm just going to take a little handful of this mixture and roll it into a little ball, pop it right down to the pie, and press it nice and down even all across the bottom. All right, now it's time to lid this pie, and I take my funnel here. This is about a half inch hole, I think, and just punch a hole right in the top of it. And the purpose of the hole is because we're going to fill this pie with uh, the pork jelly that we made. And that's going to give us a way to do that. In addition, it will also allow some of the moisture and uh, heat to escape from the pie so it doesn't blow up in the oven. So I'm all done building my pie and this is going to go in the refrigerator. And it's going to stay in the refrigerator for, I don't know, about 12 hours. So I'm going to remove this from the spring form. This does not cook in the spring form pan. I'm going to remove the sides and the bottom. And the purpose of refrigerating this for about 12 hours was to let it get nice and firm. And it is exactly that. It, it's nice. You have to excuse me for a moment while I walk over and show off my awesome pie making to my wife. Alright, now this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes and I actually cooked it for about an hour and 20 minutes because I wasn't real thrilled with uh, the pie crust at the end of 45 minutes. And you're going to see me stick it in the oven here. I forgot to do my egg wash. I did pull it back out and do an egg wash on all the exposed dough. You'll also notice my oven says 325 degrees. It is a convection oven and it operates at 25 degrees lower than what you set it to. And now we're back to the pork jelly that we made three days ago. Look how beautiful that is. I absolutely love this. So I'm going to get just enough to fill up my pie. Put it in this little saucepan. Set it on the lowest setting on the uh, stove eye. And let it come back to liquid state. So while this cooks, the meat inside shrinks up and I'm going to pour this pork jelly inside of there and it will go back in the refrigerator overnight and the pork jelly will solidify and fill all the gaps inside the pie.
man, after a long day out here working, I need me a little snack. Cue the pork pie. Here, I have it sliced in half. You didn't think that we were going to sit at the dinner table and eat this, did you? No, you see, that pork jelly that we put back in this, as this pie cooks, okay, Maisie, I'm right here, buddy. As this pie cooks, the meat shrinks, and we put that pork jelly back into it warm, and then put it back in the refrigerator, and it cools off nice and cool, and forms the jelly again. You can't have my pork pie. You can't have my pork pie. All right, you gotta go away. Go away. And that, back in the early days of settlers and and in the old world, that was used as preservative for this pie. See, this pie is eaten cold. It's not eaten warm. And way back in the day, back before John Deere tractors and luxuries that we have today, refrigerators, uh, the homesteaders and settlers would be out in their pastures. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a piece of that. Okay. Okay, go away. They would be out in their pastures, working their fields, taking care of their livestock, cutting firewood or whatever they had to be doing. And they would stick this pork pie right in their pocket, in their satchel, packed onto their horse. And it provided a nice meal for, the, for them in the middle of the day or at the end of a long day. Me, however, I did store it in some modern technology, glass bowl, with the lid. I'm gonna take a slice of this thing and dive right in. So there you have a nice look at a little sliver of it. And you can see the jelly as my pastry falls apart right there. A very hearty, delicious, tasty snack. If you haven't made old world British style pork pies, you don't know what you're missing. Hey, I'm Steve right here at Hematite Homestead, where we pasture raise heritage breed Cooney Cooney pigs and do things like this with them. Again, special thanks to Ryan at Heavenly Hills Homestead and Tony at Kettle Kitchen for inviting me on this collaboration. It was a great fun time. Make sure you're checking out all the odd holiday meals videos. I'm going to put the schedule down inside the description with a link to some videos that have already taken place. And check out that playlist. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you're checking out Him Tight Homestead on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Merry Christmas, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.